everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name's Jack and today is another Lego collection review day. In front of me I've got all of the Boba Fett minifigs and all of the Jango Fetts. Altogether there are 13 different Boba Fett minifigs, and he wasn't necessarily the most difficult Star Wars character to acquire in LEGO, but certainly the most expensive. This is partially because several of these minifigs are very rare collectible ones, and on top of that I think he's just a more popular and sought after character. This has been a very popularly requested collection, so I'm glad we finally got all of these minifigs in one spot, and we can check out the collection together. Alright, I'm going to go through this collection chronologically now. I'm going to tell you what sets they're from and how much they're worth. Alright, so our first minifig is a year 2000 release. He came out in three sets. One was a minifig set 3341, also Jabba's prize set 4476, and of course Slave 1 set number 7144. Out of all of the old minifigure designs, I think old Boba Fett still looks very very good, and he might still be compatible with some of the more contemporary Star Wars minifigs. This older mold is both his helmet and his jetpack. There's some simple printing on the front and sides of the helmet, and he's also got a pretty standard print for the torso. He has a blank black headpiece, no printing on his back or legs, and instead of a blaster pistol, these older minifigs just had bullhorns turned backwards with trans studs on the tips. He goes for around 18 bucks in good condition on Bricklink, and our next guy is the first Django. He came out in 2002 in the set Django Fett Slave 1 7153. This guy right here might actually be one of my favorite in the entire collection. I just think the helmet and jetpack mold looks great in silver, and I believe this kind of bluish purple color used for his legs and arms is a retired color. I also like that he came with the classic revolver pistols instead of any modern weapons. He comes with a black head with yellow printing to show his face, and there's also detailing that shows a little speaker, the edge of his spacesuit, and he's even got a little bit of stubble. And believe it or not, this Django in good condition is around a hundred dollars. In that same set we also get Child Boba Fett. He's got some okay printing on the front of his torso piece, and it looks like he's got some sort of angry or mischievous little grin. And when we jump up one more year, we get one of the most rare and sought after Star Wars minifigures in existence. This is the elusive Boba Fett from Cloud City set number 10123. It was an extremely expensive set with a lot of exclusive figs way back when it was released, and this is the most sought after character from that set. Not only does he have printing on his legs and the groin piece, but I'm pretty sure that he is among the very first minifigs to ever have printing on his arms. And not only that, it's actually very, very detailed printing. Both sides of his arms are highly detailed, and I'm willing to say that they're better or at least comparable to a lot of minifigures arm printing that's coming out today. He's still a great minifig now, but for his time he was certainly the most highly detailed minifig you could get. Okay, and after saying all that, when you break him down in price, I would say he is bare minimum $300, but if you want him guaranteed new, he ranges between around $350 to $450. But there's a lot of guys in this collection, so let's move on to 2006. We only get one new Boba Fett, and can you guess out of these two which one is the original and which one is the 2006 release? I'll give you three seconds. The only difference between the original Boba Fett released in the year 2000 and this guy is that a slightly different kind of gray plastic was used to make up his body. Aside from that, all of the printing is exactly the same. He was released in the sets Slave 1 6209 and Jabba's Sail Barge 6210, and he is about $8 cheaper than the original coming out to around 10 bucks on Bricklink. So the original plastic gray Boba is 18, and this guy that is slightly more bluish gray is around 10. Now 2009 also gives us a new Boba Fett, and he is only slightly easier to point out than the two previous Bobas. That inner lining towards his visor is not quite as dark a brown as it was before, and he was released in a magnet set with Boba Fett, Leia, and a Royal Guard. He no longer carries a bullhorn piece, he's about 13 bucks on Bricklink, and let's jump up to 2010. This is the first year we get more than just one new version of Boba Fett, and I'm going to show off the last produced version of Boba Fett that has the single helmet and jetpack mold, and this is the white concept Boba Fett that came out in a poly bag. Specifically, he came out in a New York Toy Fair giveaway promo poly bag, and it's pretty easy to recognize this guy is simpler than the rest of the Boba Fett's released. The only printing on him is the black outline of his armor, which when you compare it to the original Boba Fett is almost exactly the same, though he doesn't have the outline for the symbol on the right of his chest, and instead includes three little dots on his lower left. I actually did an unbagging episode of this exact minifig when I got him, and uh, when he's still in the poly bag, this minifig is about $100. But moving forward, 
forward, this is actually the very first truly improved Boba Fett. And what I mean by that is that the helmet and jetpack are now two different brand new molds. The printing for his torso looks much, much better. He's got a cloth piece now draping over his shoulder, and now Boba Fett even has a face. It's a decent representation of what you might imagine Boba Fett to look like underneath the helmet, and this guy came out in the Slave 1 set 8097. His blaster rifle has a little gray pin piece on it, which I think looks a little bit better. And this guy, brand new, is around 22 bucks on Bricklink. Jumping up to the year 2012, we get another two brand new Boba Fetts. Well, at least one of them is brand new. He now has leg printing, and this is the first version of him with printed feet. This extra bit of printing on the front of his body does make him look a bit better. And the other notable differences about this guy are that the groin piece is now green, though it's mostly printed black on the front. And the cloth on his shoulder is no longer dark brown, but looks a little bit more yellowish green. His blaster now has a lightsaber handle on the front of it, and he's about a $15 minifig. Oh yeah, by the way, he came out in the set Desert Skiff 9496. And the second release for Boba Fett in 2012 was basically this minifigure, except he just came with less. He was an exclusive release with the little mini Slave 1 tin can set, basically this mighty micro type build. He didn't come with a jetpack or a weapon. He also didn't have a cloth on his shoulder. And the only thing that actually is different about him is that he now has a black head with a balaclava face. Not by any means an exclusive print, but for some strange reason, he is $20, which makes him $5 more than the previously released Boba. Even though he's basically the same guy, but just comes with less stuff. I'm looking at both of the minifigs side by side right now, and honestly, I really can't see a difference between any of the printing. This seems a bit like a fluke in the pricing system, but if somebody else can find the difference between these two figs that actually makes this Boba Fett somewhat exclusive, I'd love to know. All right, that's enough of that. Moving on to 2013, we finally jump back to Django. I wouldn't blame you if you forgot that I put him in this collection, considering there's only three of them, and right now we're about to knock out the last two. This is the only true updated version of a Django minifig, and interestingly enough, the first one in this whole collection to have any printing on his back. The printing for the whole body does look really, really good. I think the Mandalorian plated armor looks a lot better when it's in reflective silver, and I also like the plastic used on the helmet and jetpack to give it that sheen. Interestingly, enough he has the same print as the other Boba Fett faces that we saw before, and he also comes with pieces that I think are a little bit more appropriate for his pistols, though I still prefer the six shooters from the original. He's a pretty rare minifig, he came out in the Corporate Alliance tank droid set number 75015, and brand new he is just shy of $30. It might be a little easier to guess where this next Django came from. He of course was one of the exclusive minifigs to come out in the advent calendar for this year, set number 75023. His Mandalorian armor is now red, and I really like how some of that paint is a little chipped off so you can see some of the reflective detailing underneath. And I also think it was a very good idea for them to make his torso piece just slightly darker red than the rest of his body. It makes the other details on this fig pop a little more. His jetpack is of course replaced with a bag for presents. And none of the exclusive Christmas figs have been listed at anything too expensive, but this guy's about 10 bucks brand new. And if you did go through this advent calendar, you'll know what this next minifig is. We have our second and final version of the child Boba Fett. He's actually pretty similar to the original Boba Fett in a lot of ways. There's a much more vibrant blue now used for his body and legs, but his arms are still dark blue, and the printing for his torso is just a bit more updated. He's got a much more mischievous smile now. He's about a $9 fig, and we are skipping 2014 to see two brand new Bobas. This first one was the Boba from the Ultimate Collector Series Slave 1, set number 75060, so you can pretty much expect that he's got a lot of exclusive printing. In fact, all of the printing on his body has been redesigned. He is the first adult Boba Fett to have printing on his back, and he's even got a print for the cloth on his shoulder. In fact, the only thing that this guy shares to any of the previous Boba Fetts is that he uses the same helmet and jetpack piece. When you compare him next to the most recent Boba Fett, you can see that definitively all of the designs are new, except for maybe the printing on his toes, but it's up to you to decide which one you actually think is better. I do think the Ultimate Collector series prints look a little bit nicer, but I can't say one of prints is particularly better than the other. The main differences about this guy that make him absolutely exclusive is A, the printing for the face, which I don't believe has been used on any other minifig, and B, he has two exclusive prints for his arms. Let's compare those arm prints from the Cloud City Boba back in 2003, and you can see that while the Ultimate Collector Series Boba prints are better, the Cloud City ones really aren't that bad at all. Alright, so the Ultimate Collector Series Boba Fett is pretty darn good on all respects. I even like his weapon build a little bit more than the other ones, and right now he is around $45 on Bricklink, and this set isn't even retired yet. Finally moving on, our second Boba Fett of 2015 came from the character Encyclopedia. He was exclusive to that book. 
and he is the new version of White Boba Fett. The most interesting thing to note about this White Boba Fett is that they didn't decide to reuse any of the old Boba Fett prints, but give them entirely new ones. I like these prints a lot, they're very minimal. The black lines show true separation between armor and belt, whereas the gray and light gray printing show a little bit more detail. His jetpack is white and he's got a red triangle printed in the center of his helmet. The print for his face is different though, not exclusive. And right now he is listed at around $17. All right, guess what? This is our very last Boba Fett. He came out in 2016. He was in the carbon freezing chamber, set number 75137. And the body printing copies that of the Ultimate Collector Series Boba from the year before, though this time he doesn't have an exclusive printing for the face, instead a just regular Stormtrooper or Clone Trooper face. And he also doesn't have printing on his arms. The build for his blaster is slightly different. Instead of the hilt piece being at the end of a blaster rifle, it is now just at the end of a blaster pistol. And he is in fact the cheapest of the Boba Fett minifigs coming out to $7. And before I show the entire collection together, it is worth mentioning the existence of a few other Boba Fett minifigs, and they are so incredibly rare they're pretty much impossible to get your hands on one. In 2010, during the May the 4th promotion, two bronze Boba Fetts were given away at random to people that ordered sets in the US or Canada. And also during Comic-Con of that same year, there was a competition where winners could receive either one of two sterling silver Boba Fett minifigs or 14 karat gold minifigures. According to Wikipedia, it's possible some more gold and silver minifigs were given out during another Star Wars celebration, but there's basically just a handful of these minifigures in existence. I wouldn't be surprised if these minifigs were labeled somewhere in the $10,000 range each, but the reality is nobody is selling these figures. I don't know if we could or would buy those minifigures if the opportunity ever arose, but I think we'll be happy with all of our Boba Fett's for now. Speaking of which, here's the entire collection. This collection totals 16 minifigs, but out of every single minifigure collection we have posted on this channel so far, this one is the most expensive. And that does include our largest one so far, which is our Jedi minifigure collection. Don't quote me, I haven't actually checked the numbers, but needless to say, he is an incredibly sought after Lego minifigure. As for a new Boba Fett I'd like to see in Lego form for the future, I'd like to see how they show Boba Fett off in the new Rogue One movie. I don't know if he's in this movie for sure, but if he is, he probably has newer looking armor. All right, that is it for this collection review. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I really like making these videos for you guys. And if you have any ideas about another collection you might want to see in the future, you can let us know in the comment section below. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching and we will see you next time at Brick Vault.